Welcome back, everybody, to the Split 2 Last Chance Qualifier. It comes down to this. This is going to decide who is going to be a Pro League team or not. I'm Taylor Reflections Noble, joined by Guy Blaze, baby. You love to see it. ALRM versus Remedy. It's about to be a good one. Oh, man, it's about to be a great one uh, for the players, for the fans. But, Taylor, I don't know about us because I've been jacking up ALRM's name all night and you've been jacking <laughs> up Remedy's name all night, okay? So between the two of them, <laughs> we're going to have our work cut out for us. But ultimately, uh, we're going to be breaking down this action coming into this series because we want to know how good is our 12th Pro League team going to be that is going to be joining us here at the end of the month to kick off the Pro League. And I'm excited to find out who it's going to be. I think we got two great options here. Another North American team that's kind of going to be coming through. And pretty much at this point, we're going to have eight North American teams and four LATAM teams in the Pro League. What's Last up with season, that? it was split six and six. But yeah. now with uh, teams kind of forfeiting their spots that they already had before from the other league to make new squads as we transition to 4v4, um, this is just how the dust settle at this time around. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? You know, hey, Latin America is still very, very strong, but NA mm -hmm. continues to come up. I don't know what it is, man. But then again, they've got some of the most dominant Latin American teams, I think, this split. Yeah. That uh, NA has to be worried about. They, we we'll may have more, even but they have, have good four, quality. We'll see them in the top six. I think we could. I think we really could. Again, they've been looking very, very strong. I don't know who's going to make it out here. Uh, it is going to be one of our most scuffed up casts. Uh, without question, though, Blaze, I agree with you, man, with ALRM versus Remedy. But we apparently have some type of update. I don't, I, we genuinely have no idea. We're in the dark about this, but there's really? been a logo update of some sort. And I don't know what we're talking about. Ah! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, yo, hold on. I thought this was going to be some serious thing. I, was I thought to say, I was who like, the new like, org on the squad. No, nope. I thought there was a new org. There's not, it's Remedy. You know what? You keep it though. That's fine. I, I can't do it. I Good. cannot. I, I, I've been casting I think for a decade. Remedy is a cooler name anyway because you're like ramming your opponents. It's not the Remedy. Stop. We got the Remedy. <laughs> all right. I like it. I'm here for it. Wow. Remedy is ramming the old man. They are beating them down. There you yeah, go. that just yeah, doesn't, that just doesn't, that, does, that hey, doesn't work. Taylor, we're trendsetters, man. What can you say? <laughs> man, whatever produ production. I really thought that was something serious. All right. Remedy <laughs> is going to be playing against ALRM, ARML, Foundation, Asylum, and Harbor. Those are our three map picks. Asylum for Remedy gets through. I think that mm. was a mistake. Yeah, so uh, Asylum is going to get through, and we just watched them have a great series on that map before. But if we look at the picks and bands, all right, ALRM said, you know what? We don't want to do Vascar. And we got a chance to cast them. Me and Ryan did on Vascar earlier, and I felt like they did a good job. Um, oh, sorry, that's Remedy who got rid of it. ALRM yep. did not want them to play training mm -hmm. grounds. I got it mixed up. I'll take that back. So they don't want to deal with <laughs> Remedy on training grounds as we saw them play training grounds earlier today. And it was a map in which they made a comeback on. So they had to pick their poison between that and Asylum. Now, both these squads have two awesome maps to kick this one off. When it's all said and done, we're going back to Harbor, a map in which we've already seen both these two teams play today. So it'd be interesting to see if we do go the distance, which we hope. Map three is here for the last team. We want it to be a competitive series. Uh, when they get there, we'll see how the two play styles mesh. And, and it is going to be happening shortly. I'm actually personally sad that training grounds doesn't get through. Now, the reason why is because both of these teams lost to Old Men 5-1 to one on that map. And I wanted to see who was the better out of the two teams that ended up losing like that, right? Was it just, is Old Men really that good? Or do they play against each other and all of a sudden it goes to round nine and it's a nail biter through and through till the very end, right? I just like to see where they stack against other teams on some of their weakest maps. But like you said, both teams didn't want training grounds. They got it out of there. They've lost terribly on, on, on that map tonight. So it makes sense why it does go to the wayside. But, you know, when it does come to foundation for uh, ALRM, you uh, you watched a series earlier. Was foundation one of those maps uh, that ALRM played? No, it was not. Um, I have not had a chance to cast foundation all today um, in this okay. LCQ, but it's going to be nice, be nice to see it now because foundation and asylum in our first two maps, uh, we had it as map three for the first time, I believe, in that last series, but it didn't go to okay. distance. But when we, I said it before, when it comes down to that staple esports competitive map, Gears of War 4, which is Foundation, and Gears of War 5, which is Asylum, 
both these two teams should understand how to play this map flawlessly. The rotations, the engagements, the setups. We, we, we've seen a lot of gameplay on these two. So we're going to be extra critical when it comes down to it because if they want to be successful in a pro league, these are two maps they should know how to play. 100%. I mean, and these two maps have been the bread and butter essentially throughout the Pro League qualifiers. I can only assume that it's going to be the same way when Pro League starts up, right? So mm -hmm. these are maps they should be very familiar with. When it does come to foundation, though, for ALRM, I think they're going to be pretty well versed on it. I mean, Rocky, Morality, Abolix, Lanarchy, you have a lot of slaying potential there that really can be brought to the forefront. That mid-battle, right, for foundation sets you up for the, for the remainder of the round. With that slaying power with you, I think it's going to set them apart from the competition because now Bollix can really shine. He's not going against uh, he's not going against Detox, right? That's kind of Detox was kind of the thorn in his side, man, just shutting him down. So now Bollix pretty much has free reign to do as he pleases, unless somebody from Remedy steps up and takes him down. I expect that to be Tanks or even Red Nine to do so, but we're going to find out very shortly. But let me say this: if Remedy wins this map, mm -hmm. going into Asylum. I think it could be a 2-0 i really do it could be man and um you guys in chat can decide if that's going to be an upset or not uh we got three players on the side of alrm um who have been in the pro league before who have played at a top level i'm expecting big things for these guys in a series but on the flip end it's a roster full of players who are hungry red nine tanks eight days days has been in pro league before but now he got a, a squad with some young guns who he trying to um make some magic happen with so we'll see if they can do that you know junk guns have a fire under them, man that's i think unmatched to anybody else right even the veterans who have been there like the young guns want to be on top and well this is their opportunity to do so but only one team stands in their way and that's alrm let's find out how this matchup does finish out but either way lanarchy is going to be challenged by aches tanks is also going to pressure down lanarchy says i've had enough i'm getting out of here and he it looks like he's going to go to concede bravo not necessarily all the way conceded but it's going to be a lot easier to push in but with the bollocks being into the mix that changes things now aches and tanks the duo will they be able to hold these two players off we're about to find out because that's another duo on the other end and Lanarchy and yep. the Bollocks. Both these squads watching the B-Hill and in this position, unless somebody really messes up on either side, they're hoping that their teammates on the other end of the map can make plays. This is where your 1v1 players come clutch. But in this fight, if you're in a 2v2, where do you get your advantage? Well, firstly, who has the right hands in these scenarios? That's going to be tanks and eights if they want to push through the center. But Tanks can't go too far because at that point, he's going to get crossed by three people. So you can focus fire, try to move up just a bit. And we see it's going to be ALRM who calls reinforcements to get Tanks off the cover. He got focus fire, but in the end, him and Apes hold their ground. And they're going to be there for each other, watching the left and the right. They're going to win this fight and capture the B-Hill. I am shocked that the scoreline is still as close as it is. Both teams are just clawing and oh, trying no. to get the favor. But the domination is coming Abolix. in. This might be a domination. Two and five are going to get the break. Red nine and days are there. But in the end, ALRM will take control so far. Rocky's going to be isolated by himself. Days is going to push into him. But regardless, though, Remedy will fall behind. How are they going to grasp control again? Man, you know, that was a great plays there by, by Tanks and Ace, but Abolix was on the map still. They killed everybody else but him. And he says, I have no issues 1v2 and you both to keep this B-Hill in favor of my squad. He knows help is coming. But does uh, Remedy know that Rocky's going to be mid-map? They do. Days has a mark, and he's going to be the focus of attention. Player 3 tried to flank behind, but Abolix had his back with the pre-fire on the Lancer. Rocky needs to get out as he's going to go up the hill, regroup with his teammates. But because he scurried away, this is a great play by Tanks and Ace. Get to try to fight no. Bollocks and he almost won me to him again. But this time around, Ace oh. does clean up the kill. He does not stay for the hill. He's trying to flank with his teammates. He told, he said, player three, Tanks, bro, you cap the hill. We need to make sure yeah. we get the home. And I think that was the right move. I would have been so mad if Aix would have lost that fight. I, I would have been so angry because Aix had so many shots. He just couldn't get the final shot in the end. Maybe another Got all hills levels. that are good. Are, all hit, different levels, baby. Different levels. And that thumb motion, too, like you were showing earlier. <laughs> ALRM, so close to victory. They've got Charlie. They're getting Bravo. And I think this is going to be all true. Yes, it will be. Well fought out. You know, Remedy wasn't really in it. 
like to begin with. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, granted, the scoreline was very close. ALRM kind of held on, and once they once they got control, they never gave it up. But it was still a fun round to see, nonetheless. But a couple of shaky shots, though. Th- those shots need to kind of even out onto the side of uh, of Ramity if they want to beat this roster. All right. Um, as far as weapon placements go, we're about to see what we're going to get first. Now, some teams love to get these early Botox over um, at the initial home hills because as we move on over towards that second half, they can um, have incendiary grenades to work the statue. On the other end of the map at the uh, welding and fountain secondaries, that's more of a shot grenade location when it comes down to uh, shocking the ramp or shocking the spawn entry points. is very useful there to lock it in a lot of points. Um, and it's a very strong home hill setup compared to all of the, the other maps that we have here um, that we're playing competitively with. So um, this opening round, Taylor, mirror strategies kind of as before, but as I say that, no help came inside towards the B hill for Remedy. The help, um, no, no help came in for ALRM in time. Now, in the end, it don't matter because Remedy fell. They're both dead, and this is going to be a four-man push for ALRM to get the domination in this round. Yeah, Nakes is going to have to go huge here. It's a tough spot, but he's making it count. Picks up one, plays. picks up two, and like you said, big plays. Remedy will, in fact, stay in it, and uh, they're not going to be thriving, but hey, they're surviving. The Lanarchy, a beautiful kill onto Tanks, and now he's going to be able to rotate around and maybe catch a player off guard. That should be dazed. Goes in, hits a nice little shot, but it's not going to be enough to put him down. But you're not in a rush either. But in the meantime, though, Remedy is going to get the break onto B. Good job from Red Nine rotating over as quickly as he did. That was a great job by him. Now we're going to see multiple players for Remedy try to push out the map and get ALRM trapped in a setup. And it's looking like a great trap as they're on the home hill. This forces the remaining players back and the one that's left is nowhere close to the hill to even play a factor. So beautiful rotations there by Remedy. They'll have round number two locked in and we'll see what happens so far on the weapon placements. Now to kick off that round, it was two different strategies um, that we saw. We saw two, we saw um, when it comes down to this three lane map, ALRM sent two players down mid-map. Remedy sent two players towards Pistons, okay? Now, all three of these lanes had a guy in it, at least one guy. Um, as Remedy decided to push through ALRM, they came in with the flank. So Remedy needs to be careful because if they choose to push someone down low at that H, right, um, that cover coming down welding and fountains, that guy can back up sure. with a lantern and wait for help to come. So you have to take your time here um, in these opening engagements on this map. So ALRM is going to prioritize the retro with Rocky. He's going to have that in his possession. Nobody from Remedy ended up gathering uh, the their retro lancer that they do have on their side. So I'm curious to see if that's going to have a tremendous impact. For Tank, so he doesn't need a retro. He just needs a regular lancer. And Morality is going to hit the ground. Now he's going to focus attention on Bollocks up top. His morality will, in fact, bleed out. But hey, for Remedy, good job on them for pushing forward. And look at Lanark. You really know where he can go, but he gets out with his life. But he's not going to be or get very far. His Aix is going to be just behind him. But Remedy is spread pretty thin at this point. And I hope, and I hope, they don't get taken out here and get counter wiped like Rocky is doing to Red Nine and Dazed. And they're going to take their time as they clean up these two kills. They're going to get both home hills. Player zero is going to go to B, but player nine needs to stay alive as he gets towards mid map. He was trying to see if he can get some assistance from the cross, but um, his teammates, uh, they will rotate over. Ultimately, the home hill is decapped, and that's what Remedy wanted to do as they brought time for their teammates to come off respawn and get their home hill back under their control. And at this point, it's only a deficit by 20 for Remedy. Let's see how they want to go on the offensive and which hill they want to prioritize. LRM set up quite nicely. Player seven can rotate in. He could be that linchpin, right? Because he's and he's going to need to. Remedy is sending in three players, so this is going to be a moment where he needs to rotate in and help his team. And that's a bollocks, right? That is the man who can really change the course of this round. But he can also assist player eight, Rocky, with taking over A. But Rocky's going to put matters into his own hands. He's going to be in that one v one. Player seven is going to be coming behind him, but B was lost. But either way, ALRM does retain control with the two to one hill advantage by going home nil to home hill. So at this point in time, Remedy, they just really can't get a leg up. Every step they take, ALRM is just ahead of them. And this is going to be worrisome as the rounds do continue on. But at this point in time, Blaze, I think ALRM should be able to lock in this round relatively soon. I say that, but C is being locked in from Remedy. So let's scary. see how this round does. It is looking scary, but Remedy might get the domination Rocky. here. 
What you got, Rocky? He goes down, so that home hill gets taken up, uh, gets taken away. This is where multiple people are coming off respawn for ALRM. They got a nice lead. They just need to take their time and get the decaf first. But Days with a push through mid map gets one, gives up his meat shield a bit early there. But I think his team may have done enough. That flash is all you need to break this hill and get it killed. But was it enough? Now, we know that these players got a limit to respawns, but now the timing will not work out. You know how I said so elegantly, right? Just a little bit <laughs> yeah. before this about yeah, Remedy moments. takes one step forward. <laughs> and then, of course, ALRM is just one step ahead of them. I take it all back. I don't know what just happened, but Remedy just absolutely put that round in their favor. Good on them for doing so. They take that two to one lead. And again, if it, I'm fully confident if Remedy does come through and they win this foundation and they move into Asylum, ALRM is going to be in trouble here. Looking back on that round, I do believe it was the Retro Lancers on top of the home hill, which really slowed down the players of ALRM trying to retake that. Uh, also, you know, Rocky, he had a big 1v2 that he needed to win on the home hill. But while that 1v2 is happening, there's a 3v2 elsewhere. You just need one heal. But the Retro Lancer had a lot of pressure and had the remaining players of the Swarm team staggered. Uh, we'll see if they get into that situation again. I know they're going to be doing everything that they can not to, but we got a 2-1-1 being ran here for Remedy and a 1-2-1 being ran by AL, AL, LRM. So they're going to mm -hmm. meet here in open. This is a big fight for Tanks. He's going to be able to get some help and Ooh. get some shots on his next guy. Great 2v2 action between those guys. Tanks is the player for Remedy that has the ability to change the course of the map. Again, you have certain players that can do so. You have Krabbage, you have Dyslexic, right? Uh, you have Detox uh, from earlier before with Old Men. These players can literally shift the momentum into the favor of your team by simply slaying out. So good on uh, Tanks for doing so. But more importantly, good on his duo, Aches. Aches is always there to get his pickup, right? And that gives Tanks the confidence to be able to push into engagements where it might seem like all is lost. He'll drop to all fours. He's down but not out. But but then, of course, Aix is there to pick him right back up on his feet and put him back into the fight. That is a duo you want for life. 53 seconds, 3 to 1. And Remedy is really starting to take control of this map. Now, each one of these, uh, each one of these rounds, well, so far, uh, when it comes down to initiating a fight here on Foundation, it, it's going to be a 2v2 fight that, that breaks out and that's going to set the tone for the rest of the round. Now, we just saw that fight happen in open. Um, Remedy sent the majority of their players towards the B-Hill from Pistons on the flip end. You have more of a kind of default strat on the flip end for ALRM sent the majority of their players down mid-map. Now, I think that's going to change because we are going to have our heels flop, and up top is going to be a 1v1 lane. But ALRM, they have not changed their strategy. And I think it's one of the better strategies for this map because your front spawn can choose to go to closed and go to B or go to open and flank the home heels when he wants. And that's a, if you run a, a, a nice base strat like that, where you can run multiple strats out of, it just makes it so hard for your opponent to counter you um, and figure out what you're doing in the beginning of the round. Big battle for the home hill. Looks like Remedy is going to be holding on to F and they're going to be able to lock it in place. So well done from Red Nine as well as I believe that's, is that Tank? No, excuse me, that's Dazed with him. So I'm seeing a trend, right? It's Red Nine and Dazed who love to stick together. Tanks and Aches are the duo that run the map as well. So I love the fact that in this 4v4, and this transcends multiple multiple teams, right? Mm -hmm, You'll see mm -hmm. these duos start to really emerge, and those duos can change the course of a map. Great instant. That's going to bring Morality, Rocky to their feet, and we'll also see Rocky get, or Lanarchy get finished off too. That's three down. Remedy yep. is really heated up, and I don't know what changed from uh, that first couple of rounds to now, but something really lit a fire underneath them, and they just aren't looking back. Oh, they're ready for the pro league spot at this point, Taylor, 100%. the way that they're playing. Um, both home heels locked in and got the neutral. Days. Oh, he gets one, but does he get two? He did enough. Nope. Yo, Taylor, that was almost a trip cap domination, too. If it wasn't a fight on the other end of the map at the home hill, he gets that chunk there. That hill wasn't fully decapped. It could have stole that round from a sneaky play, man. You got to be careful because mm. 1 800 days never fails. Uh, earlier, you, you talked about um, when it comes down to you love seeing duos. Man, I've been yeah. saying it since 5v5. Yo, you got your home hill player, you got your two duos. In every single map, those duos should be playing together. You want those guys to have, even though you're a 4v4 team, 
you want to have the most chemistry in every area of the map not to play favorites and i know other players got some spots that they love playing but the duos man they get to a point where you don't even have to talk they know exactly what their team what's happening to their teammates and if they have that chemistry they are better able to react to whatever's thrown at their way Remedy looking to lock in their fourth round, and they will. So they lead four to one as ALRM trailing behind drastically. And if they don't clean something up, it's going to be curtains for them. But I will say this. Remedy is impressing me tremendously. Red 9, 8 and 16. Those assists are impressive. 16 assists. You know, he's about to break 20 if we get to that point. He might not. But regardless, though, he's putting in that consistent work. And remember, Red 9 runs with Dazed. So all those assists, he's giving the kills over to Dazed. And he's happy to do so. Because at the end of the day, that stat line is just as impressive as the overall kills that they're able to accumulate. It just it achieves getting the W in the end. And that's all that matters. Potential last round here. For ALRM fans, you better send them your energy. But I think we just got a drop shot on Statue. That's going to change things a little bit. But again, I think that slaying power, though, from Remedy, is going to carry them through, and that should be their drop shot. All right, here we go. The drop shot is going to be placed on the other end of the map. It's that Statue. We're going to have incendiary grenades on both of these sides. But ALRM, they feel like this is going to be the weapon that's going to help them close out multiple rounds. Let's see if they're right. We are. Tanks setting up. Of course, he's going to be the one to kind of challenge this drop shot, right? I mean, I would expect no less from him. He just has so much slaying power. He should be there. But it's going to be at a bit of a stand, so both teams are okay with this. I do think LR a -R -A -L -R -M has the advantage, though, because they're going to be able to go up that uh, those baby steps, maybe get a quick pick. My question but, uh, is, is that, yeah. like, the home hill just got capped by Remedy. Player Zero can't move. He's waiting for flanks to come through. And he's going to fight a Ooh, 1v2, but geez. he should have moved years ago. As soon as the D-Hill was capped, he needs to go mid-map, go open, go somewhere. But you cannot wait to get 1v2 as well as the other members on his team. They were trying to push through E, but for some reason, ALRM waited Ooh. for that flank to come through after seeing a home hill being captured and Remedy completely dismantled them. So break that down for me even more, man, because, you know, you're talking about ALRM. They're getting flanked on. They lose the home hill to home hill. Actually, they don't even lose it because they never try to hold it, right? So mm -hmm. you, you can't lose something if you don't even try to obtain it. But Remedy, cap Remedy was clearly able to capitalize in some way. Where did they ultimately end up capitalizing over ALRM in that play? You know, so in, a, in the last round, as I was looking at the mini map, um, I don't know who initially his guy was, uh, but one of the players there on the side of Remedy was able to get a free route towards the home hill. Now, at this moment, as you're decapping your home hill, your opponent's home hill, and recapping it, it's about eight seconds on the clock in which that takes. You see this, and everybody in the map sees it happening on the screen, but player mm -hmm. zero was sitting mid-map, trading Lancer fire with somebody and you have to know that this guy belongs to somebody and if he's that far out of the picture where the focus of the fight is on the other side of the map at the E hill where is your man in advantage okay um looking at it in hindsight maybe it was the player who was playing top tables for ALRM who had to push across and flank the guys at the E hill for his team to be able to lock that in and continue to rotate the map but Player zero, um, actually, I don't think it, was, it wasn't player zero, but whoever it was there for the side of Remedy, he capped the home hill, he flanked a 2v1, the one guy that was in middle map for ALRM, and they continued to flank the guys at E. And I just felt like it was a lot of time that, that went off the clock where you guys should be pushing and taking your numbers elsewhere in the map. So what it boils down to, everything you just said, I mean, it's just simply communication, right? Mm -hmm. It's communication, awareness. map awareness, and numbers in general, right? Three critical components that need to be had or need to be mastered, if you will, if you want to be the best of the best or be in the pro league. Yeah. And that was drastically lacking in that five to one deficit, that five to one loss from ALRM. Thank Bottom you for line. packaging that for me, Taylor, because that's exactly what hey, look, it was. Hey, look, I'm here for it, man. I'm here. I, I take what you, you you put in, and then I give out you something simplified, up. okay? There you go. Because you, you're the master, <laughs> right? You're, you're levels ahead. And see, I got I to gotta dumb it down for people like me out there. You know thank what I'm you, saying? Thank you. I'm talking I'm talking to the competitive <laughs> players out there. My, my <laughs> mind is in seven different places. Thank you for packaging that one. Um, In the end, we were coming into this one feeling like ALRM was, was going to 
kind of be the favorite here. At least I was. I felt like they were going to be the favorite here in this series. But the boys of Remedy are hungry. All right. And now yeah. they get to go on over towards their map pick in Asylum. And this is this. Uh, it's looking like we may have some new faces in a pro league if we keep at this pace. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Red Nine, Tanks, Aches, right? These guys want to be pro players. That That is a huge honor. Like, when you think about how many pro players, like legitimate pro players are out there, it's really not a lot compared to the overall ecosystem of uh, just all the players in general who play Gears, right? And the same thing with all different games out there. So the point is, being labeled a pro player, whether it just be for one split or not, like, that's a huge accomplishment, right? That is that is something you can say, and, and everybody thinks that's awesome because you, you respect the work that you put in the grind of game, right? You respect the work that someone put in to be the best of the best. And uh, that's not something easy to scoff at. Like, that is a major accomplishment. And uh, I'm not going to lie for tanks, for aches, like... I may not have known all about them, but they have been putting in the work clearly because they're able to beat some of the best teams out there. So without question, all that work, it, you know, it's it's not going to be lost in vain if they become a pro team. Like that's really reaching the apex. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's just awesome. Now, it will not be lost in vain whatsoever. Now, they're going to have to turn it up a notch. And, and here's why. Earlier in that map, okay, we, I, I, I just, I'll say this. I know a Bollix is scratching his head like, what the hell just happened? I was 1v2 mm -hmm. on these guys like with, with ease, okay? Locking them down. How do we let these guys outplay us in a fashion in which they did? And we know how savage of a player Abolix is when he has his mind focused. So going right. into Asylum, I'm expecting him to have a big map to bring his team back into his series because he was having a field day with those players down low at the B Hill on Foundation, but the teamwork and the passion was just a little bit too much collectively on the side of Remedy, and ALRM could not overcome that in map one. Well, Ryan said individual play style is huge uh, in 4v4. You have a guy that pops off and plays well. He can really change the course of a map, and that is the mm -hmm. case. But again, you still can't win a map just by one player's performance. You need oh. everybody else to still be doing their job. And if they're not doing their job, well, they're going to fall behind. You mentioned Abolix popping off. He was playing very uh, very well when I think it was training grounds in just uh, the series before. And you had Lanarchy, who was consistently losing his gunfights over in training grounds on Bravo. And that was to tidy from old men. So the point is, though, if you have one weak uh, chain in the cog or one link, weak chain link in the link of the chain of the big chains, that's all can the fall cog. apart, Blaze. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a cog, it's a chain, whatever you want, man. There's mm -hmm. a chip in it. Bottom line, it's not going to work. But okay? yeah, if the chain is broken, it won't. You're damn right about that, Taylor, <laughs> right? And it was links missing all around this one. Um, but hopefully they'll get they'll get linked back up together as we head here onto Asylum. Um, because we know how talented the players are at ALRM. Um, but in the end, man, it's looking like you know, if, if it keeps at this pace, they'll be playing a lot more challenger series than they did uh in previous seasons. And they're gonna have to grind right, back up. But I'll tell you one thing, man, regardless of who's in the Challenger series with this format, you got more opportunities than ever to get into the pro league, all right? So if you don't make it here, keep your head up and keep grinding, get into some ELO 8s, play against the best, and, and uh, work on that strafe, baby. Well, there's your man Abolic starting off strong, taking down Red Nine, leaving Tanks to be isolated by himself. But uh, he does drop Abolic, but it's gonna be uh, very quickly lost is they're going to go ahead and capitalize on to B. Now, the question is, how far does Abolix push this? He's already going to be in the spawn of Ramity, but is this going to cost his life? Well, he's able to finish off one, drop aches, but eventually will fall to the wayside. But the important thing is for Abolix making that push, even though he loses his life, he still distracts and takes out one member from Remedy. Therefore, uh, ALRM is still able to continue to pressure forward, and Remedy can't even get out of their own spawn. No, nah, they can't get out whatsoever, Taylor. They're trying right now in this moment, but the pressure is there and the wall is formed. Triple cap. Domination comes through. So, round one to ALRM, and that was a great start, and it was off the back of Abolix getting first blood and him having some help from his teammates to get the second kill. At that moment, they kept the death staggered, and they put the pressure on their opponents. Great stuff coming out. Big round for ALRM. This is something that they need to keep up, keep up that energy. After all, this is for their pro league life, and uh, they need to force a game number three on Harbor, which I feel could be a pretty close one, given the fact uh, how well both teams have played that very map in the past. 
but we'll definitely have to see how these rounds continue on. Let's not forget, right, on Foundation just a little bit earlier, ALRM came out the gates swinging, right? I mean, they won round one pretty convincingly, but after that, if Dramedy just kind of found the chinks in armor, if you will, and they were able to win round after round after round. May not be the case here, but uh, at least you got round one out of the way. For Bollocks, though, he started off strong. Again, he was the one who took down uh, one of the team, one uh, I think was Red Nine just a little bit earlier. So uh, paired with Rocky, that's just a deadly duo. Oh man, it's a deadly duo indeed. Um, down here on the tracks, you got the Red Nine, Red Nine, and Tanks. They'll be going up against Rocky and Abolix here. But when it comes down to this map, I think the big fight is between Dazed and Lanarchy in the mid map as they go back and forth looking for each other. And you kind of see how Lanarchy's like, "Where's my guy? Did he go under? Is he up top?" Is he hiding? What's popping off here? Days is holding back, using those camera angles here in the third person shooter to really get this intel. But as this inner train comes through, we're going to have an even fight once again. 2v2 on the other side, 2v2 on this side. That's a great opportunity for one of these guys on the tracks to kind of back up. And, um, you know, you, you, you push there towards Tombstone. And from that moment, you can either be waiting for the train to go by and you can flank if these guys push through, or you can go and take numbers on the other end of the map to get a home hill set up. Still, no one find the exact right time to move. So this comes down to Lanarchy and Dazed and, and their little 1v1 fight to create an opening. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a, it's a weird 1v1, isn't it? Because Lanarchy doesn't want to push in, and uh, of course, neither does Dazed as well. So he's going to go ahead and back off. Two players on tracks are going to shift points. And Lanarchy, I think, wants to transition over to Pavilion. That would be a huge help for mm -hmm. ALRM to kind of break onto B at this point. But uh, nobody's able to do so. We're still at this big standstill, and it's been going on for well over a minute at this point. And, and so there are advanced level techniques that, that you know, in man-on-man -man situation, especially in a fight that has two players down low, where sometimes you got to come out of cover, wall bounce a little bit, force some players to, to poke their head up. So your teammate can focus fire on man. Once he calls out like, hey, man, he's really weak. That's a great opportunity to, to commit. But, you Ooh. know, high risk, high reward. If not, it's a stalemate all day. OK, <laughs> and we're just sitting there. But as we saw, the fight broke out on tracks and it's going to end in the favor of uh, ALRM. As as I was talking about it, Remedy was trying to push them. They were trying to, you know, get them yep. out of cover. But the focus fire from the call team was just a little bit too much. Yeah, as soon as Red Nine fell, that was the uh, the key for ALRM to push forward, right? So, funny enough, the initial just finished, yet we're almost to the 200 point mark, and Ramity needs to get on to B. They do have a little bit of time, but not much, so they're going to not waste any more time. They're going to push forward and try and get these breaks. One is going to be there. It's going to be Days. Tank's going to be laying down that Lancer fire. I think Streets is probably going to see some attention relatively soon. Matter of fact, look at player five. That's Lanarchy onto the flank up player nine of Aches. And Aches is now going to be isolated in that 1v2, no. getting sandwiched. Aches needs to stay up, but he gets it. dropped. And ALRM is going to get the break on the home hill. They've got the AC split. Lanarchy flanked, but he didn't do step one, which is helping his teammate acquire the kill. You know, he uh, he kind of knew that he had to decap that hill, but he had faith that his teammate can pull it off. The score oh, no. was there. The rebuttal was here. Remedy, they fight back. So, Blaze, again, break it down. So, Lanarchy should have got the finish or at least assisted in taking him down. But instead, leaving Aches up, he was able to get picked up and therefore better the chances of taking over the home to home hill. Is that correct? So it, it, exactly. Well, in that moment, Leonarchy, their team had the lead and they had a dominant, dominant lead. So when he sure. flanks this player in his mind, he's like, all right, well, let me just make sure I get another heal so I can secure this round for our team, force them to have to decap multiple, multiple heals here. But his teammate never finished a fight and once that kill came through for um the side of remedy it was already players on the landarchy side of the map so the revive came sure. through the players off respawn they take out landarchy and they get the remaining heals in which they need to win but if his teammate was still up then the play would have worked out but it's it's a small margin uh he probably even lanced the guy and he just had full faith that his teammate can pull it off but he didn't 
unfortunate, right? I mean, you, sometimes you just got to trust your teammate. If they don't pull through, they don't pull through. But mm -hmm. it, it's not like he should take every matter into his own hands. Still got to trust those teammates. Just unfortunate it really is because that round was all them. Like, they had that in the bag. But got to let it go. Short-term memory, right? And at this point, you just got to continue to shut them down. But not a good start as Rocky's going to fall to the wayside. Abolix now is going to be in a tough spot. He's about to get finished off. He does. Lanarchy is now going to be in a 1v2. He's going to be peppered. Front train's going to be moving in. It's going to separate days, but it doesn't even matter. Red 9 gets the elimination onto Lanarchy. He's going to bleed out or be finished off. And we're going to see Ramity now with Bravo in place. Player 3, though, Morality makes a move forward for ALRM. He gets the break onto the home hill of Ramity. It's short-lived, but it at least puts tanks over there, and that's going to be less manpower for the defense on B. Correct. You know for a fact that somebody has to cap that hill. And as he's capping it and you break away from that hill, that's honestly a perfect opportunity sometime for you to just transition down to the neutral hill try to help your teammates take a fight with the numbers because you know you can see on your map that on your screen that the guy is capping and whatever teammates coming off respawn let him fill in a gap and pick up your home hill if need be but that's the mastery in a game of rotations and understanding when you can pull plays off like that and leave your lane for a few seconds just to give your teammate that leg up in a fight Bit of a standstill, but Remedy's okay with this, right? They've got Bravo. They have Charlie. That was off the fantastic initial on tracks that they were able to secure. And they're well on their way to making a two to one lead. For ALRM, the pressure is all on them. They're the ones who need to get the break. But Rocky's got the utility in his hand and he is ready to use it to push forward. Meanwhile, we are going to see this underpass fight taking place. Aches now onto Lanarchy, pushing him back. Meanwhile, tracks fight well underway, but a bollocks falls, but no one's there to pick him up. Days still needs to win the 1v1 versus Rocky, who hits his shot. A bollocks is back up and they're back in the fight. Nice shot there to save his teammate on the flip in. Uh, his remaining teammates are making moves as they get closer and closer to the home hill, pushing through entrance. Three members here. They know that they got two coming off respawn, but the talent, man, just let it rip here for the last two seconds. It'll do what it needs to as the kills get picked up. The wall is formed, and that's three members down on the side of Remedy. ALRM. They take the lead once again. All right. Once again, another close round that should have went one way goes the complete opposite way. And the linchpin for that round going into the way of ALRM was, of course, Rocky winning that fight on tracks, picking up a bollocks, having that added firepower, that added teammate to push in to lock in Charlie made all the difference in the world. Now we might get something on entrance, and that's going to be the torque bow. So even though this is the first half, the neutral is going to be on B. We're going to consistently see that streets fight from now until this map is over with. So this is going to be a good indication with how both teams are going to rock the second half. All right. Shaking it up here, putting, making the creating this focal point. Um, and like you said, this sets the tone for the second half. And it's good that these teams get some reps in now. Um, get some reps in now before they get here when the neutral hill is there. But Torque Bow's acquired. They're doing some trading and switching, but with the players marked in the LB button, a bollocks and code, they kind of knew what was happening. And so they got aggressive mm -hmm. and said, hey, we ain't gonna let you guys swap weapons that oh. easily. Oh, he dropped it. What? Oh my God. <laughs> what just happened? Oh no, nerd Days, here. Chill out. I'll let, I'll let you know in a second because it's a high level move. If your teammate is weak, you may lay him. And so you get a quick revive to let him get his full health back. But when he did it there, his teammate was wrapping the bow. So the bow dropped and they had to <laughs> split like a banana. As Jacob will say. Oh my gosh, that was just, brother, that was just chaotic, man. <laughs> that could not have gone worse for the team of Ramity and ALRM. Takes control now three to one. Heartbreaking defeat, but hey, it is what it is. Next time they get, we're going to see so it again. Revving? So, go, so <laughs> there's the, there's the rev, there's the knife to reset, but <laughs> then it's all taken down again once that torque bow hits the wall. The splash damage. Ooh, close, right? But That's you close. see how fast that moves make that that move is made, and no one asks for it at a, a at a professional level. Nobody asks for you to melee and revive me, right? Awesome. As a teammate trying to be a great teammate, you feel the pressure and the damage in which your teammates taken. So you go for the straight BX, get them back to 100 health, and get back into the fight. Okay. Let's see how this fight goes. Once again, Torko still down. Nobody going for that quick pick. And with the instant being wasted, it's pretty unfortunate. But either way, though, it does narrow the lane that you can push through. 
And Tanks is going to use that to his advantage, gets away, has the Torque Bow in hand. We know he can connect with Longshot, and I assume Torque Bow will go just as well for him. Mm -hmm. This is the second time Remedy has secured a Torque Bow, and hopefully the second time is a charm, right? And it's not going to end up the way that it did last time. But either way, though, nobody's able to get on E as of yet. This is, Tanks, this though, is, is going to try and change that. Sorry, Taylor. This is a good round for Remedy, as they got the kill down low. The pressure's here. The marks and a bow are in the hands, but... With the flink coming through, Rocky and Lanarchy, they hold off. Some bows are finally going to be connected, and these bows will be enough to hold this E heal down and to reinforce this. Come! But that mm. bow will allow you to move up and get some more map control. Put the pressure there. She feels the Lancer from a bollocks, but... Oh, uh, at first he almost got a little bit too greedy. He needs to back up. Help is here. The numbers are there, but the damage is coming out in Ramity. They'll be able to continue to push through. And you can really tell Tanks is comfortable with this team, trusting in uh, in the man of uh, Dazed, right? Pushing up like that with the Torque Bow. That's a big loss if he goes down, but he trusts his teammates to be able to clear his corners uh, and even be bait at a certain point, because if you can bait out one of your teammates, even if he drops, he's down but not out, you can still use that Torque, take down a teammate. That's our uh, take down an enemy uh, member that's a net positive, right? So good on Tanks trusting in his teammate and more importantly, not being nervous to push up with that Torque Bow instead of turtling up, right? And then doing that standard push and pull fight on the E-Hill. So I like that play from him. Big round, swing round, if you will, right? That puts them at two to three and that much closer to tying it up. I do want to say that the, the fact that the last two rounds, Remedy has even gotten Torque Bow when their opponent um, has, has had the shot grenade on their side is impressive, right? It's a sure. little bait there, and it's another big reason on why ALRM chose to put the Twerk Bow down because that shot grenade was uh, was already built up. So it gives them a, a few options to kind of pull away with this one. So I like the weapon placement for them, and now we see the shot grenade really get utilized, but the counter incinerary grenade comes to the party late. It's not acquired the kill, but the damage was enough for tanks to be able to clean up both and get the Twerk Bow. And again, now he's in a power position with that Torque Bow, and he's looking to connect on a Morality Cross map. Throws it out there, doesn't connect, but he still has four more to his name. Now, Ramity needs to be careful here, Blaze. They're pushing in very aggressively. Granted, they do have two members down, so they could be able to make this work, but I don't want them to get counter-wiped at this point. But if he can connect on a Rocky, that's going to be huge. No splash damage in, still on the flank. F is now being decapped. Tanks is going to be up in their spawn. He shoots out the torque just to force some added benefit, and it looks like that's going to be it. <laughs> Ramity has managed to turn this around, bring it 3-3, three to three, lessening the chances of ALRM, sending it to a Game 3 and keeping the series alive. Oh boy, man. Remedy at this moment, they can smell the pro league. They're like, guys, we already up a map. It's 2-2. Two, two. They can't get this torque bow. Let's keep doing what we're doing. It's working two rounds away, and we are going to be in the pro league. It'll be a first time for Aches, Tanks, and um, I, and, and Days will be returning the there. And, and Red, Red 9. We're going to be the first time yep. for Red 9 there. So and I've been watching these guys for a while. Big moment for these guys. Let's see if they can stay composed here, Taylor. Challenger series to pro league qualifiers to last chance qualifiers. Will these boys finally break free and be in the pro league? The opportunity is here. But like you said, Blaze, in the beginning of this series, it's all about who has more heart, who wants it more. And Ramity, that's a great start. That's going to be two members down. Torquil now in the hand of Lanarchy, though, as he looks to connect onto Tanks. Tanks does have that sniper in his possession. Good connection from the flank. That's Aches trying to be sneaky, trying to assist his two teammates that were pressing in onto streets. Smokes are out. Lanarchy just blind fires the other torque only one to his name he has made sure that he has shot every single torque that he possibly can and now that torque is out of the way and he basically got zero benefit other than taking down apes who the hell are you tanks you're, you're you're down low with that headshot from the lower hill in the end great play he's gonna try to hold off he said I, he had to get that kill i guess you know but He's going to die off in the end there. So E kill and B kill locked in here for ALRM. Um, you know, this was a great initial here for Remedy. And it was off the back of Days leaving his fight. They had so much success grabbing that Torque Bow early on. Um, Mismatch and strategy. They decided to get the kills down low. But the power weapons in which they got in that time is all gone. And the lead is in favor of ALRM. Let's see how they want to hold this off. Remedy needs to do this patiently, cautiously, but that's not it. Days will take down Red 9. 
Tanks also falls, and ALRM, they're about to be off to the races, all to F. Player 9's going for the overextension, but now he's kind of trapped, and he's really a non-factor at this point. Player 5 knows this. He's going to be locking in the home of Remedy. Red 9 now looking to push them back, in which he will be successful in doing so, but it's only a matter of time before ALRM pushes mm. in. And with H now falling in tracks, that's going to be pretty much all she wrote. The break is coming through. Tanks might get there, and uh, actually, Dings does get the touch. No, he didn't get the X off before uh, the kill came through. Uh, I love nail biters of a round, but I also love round nines. And it looks in, in map threes, okay? And with that win coming off of ALRM, we're uh, one step closer to both of those. But a uh, good round for them because Remedy had the better initial, but Lanarchy with the bow and his composure helped his team get back um, in a great position to win that round. Well, here we are, ALRM. Good spot to be in, right? Keep the series alive. They need to win this to force a game number three on Harbor, and they have uh, managed to at least get that much closer. Disables don't come out, so we will be seeing them in uh, round number nine, if that is going to be the case. For Morality, hell of a game, 12 and 4, seven deaths. Let's see if we can keep that energy up and keep leading the team of ALRM, in which case we thought Abolix would be there, but hey, it is what it is. Torquebo was won by uh, ALRM last time. Meanwhile, Remedy was able to secure the loan shot before, so we're going to see how it works out. But it was a standstill, though, in both regards, so I think it's going to be a bit quiet. This was this was a big round for us to see that block come through, um, you know, because that comeback block needs to happen here on round eight if you are Remedy. Now, um, the vets know that one. If they don't use it, if they win this round and they don't use their block first, they made the biggest blunder ever. <laughs> okay, going into that round number nine, but shocks are out. And once again, Remedy gets the Torque Bow. Not going to connect with that one. Sniper still going to be in play, not picked up by anyone. And Remedy is in a great position. He just needs to stay composed here and I'll put this Torque Bow to good use. Let's see how it works out. Red 9, not wasting any Torques as of yet, taking his time. And there's really no reason to send one out, right? I mean, he does get the mm -hmm. active reload, but at this point, ALRM isn't pushing up. So they'll continue to accumulate those points nonstop until a move has been made. There's morality and there's ladder key, so I think they're going for it. Okay, bow's revved up. Gonna push this player back a little bit of damage, but Lanarchy scares him off there. Red Knight knows his teammate had his help, and Lanarchy took the most of that damage. Morality has to back up. He goes down. Uh, it was multiple incendiaries that on the map just a second ago. Rocky tossed his to help him and Abolix move up. And that's a great shot for Abolix. The back roll into the train for tanks. Oh, man. I know you didn't want that one to happen, but the trip cap domination momentarily was going to come through for Remedy. But because of that fight on the other end, we got still we still got some more gameplay. Taylor and Dazed and Red 9 are caught out. A Lancer's behind them. They both don't know what to do. They realize that they made their worst rotation possible. And it is a 4v2 on the map. ALRM knows it. They smell victory. They smell the map three and they're not letting up. I think this is going to be it. ALRM is there. The final victim falls. That was Aches. And there goes the chances of taking a 2-0 win in this series. Just got a lot more interesting. ALRM forces a game three on Harbor with that 5-3 win on Asylum. Well played, Blaze. Yeah, well played indeed for uh, ALRM because I honestly um, thought it was looking grim for them at the point in which they put the torque bow down and they could not get control of it. Um, but luckily for them, their opponents couldn't um, put it to full use and they made a few mistakes and kind of beat themselves. You know, your teammates lose the fight their own tracks. You're decapping a home hill, but you took a terrible route and you got caught out mm. there. Could have been a round nine, but instead it's going to be a map three. And now we get to see who's going to come out on top on Harbor to make it into the Pro League. But you know what? I wouldn't want it to be a 2-0. For a Pro League spot, come on. I want it to be more interesting than that. And I know you guys out there do too. Keep the suspense up. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, though, it's going to be game three on Harbor between these two fantastic teams. Welcome back, everybody, to Split 2 Last Chance Qualifier. I'm Taylor Reflections Noble, joined by Guy Blaze. And 
This is it. Comes down to map number three after a phenomenal close series or close map, I should say. 5-3. I say close, though, because they were fighting tooth and nail. And at one point or another, one team could have won it and then the other could have taken it over. And at this point in time, ALRM did get the 5-3 victory. They forced a map three on Harbor and they stay alive. Uh, but it wasn't easy, Blaze. Nah, it wasn't easy whatsoever. Um, the vets on the side of ALRM, they were going to make it difficult here for Red 9 to pull away, especially when it was 3-3. And as you said, it was a, it was a close game um, up into the seventh round there. Now, we're about to head into Harbor, and both these teams are about to give it their all, folks. Okay, it is their last opportunity to kick off the Pro League and be a part of an awesome day in one of the most competitive pro leagues we've ever had in Gears of War history. <laughs> and they both want to be there. Now sure. is the time to show up. It absolutely is. Again, we're looking at three fresh players. Red Nine Tanks and Aches are looking to make their pro league debut, but they've got to do it from getting through ALRM, who, by the way, have pretty much all been there, right? Rocky, Morality, Abolix, and Lanarchy. Not an easy match by any means. And now we head into Harbor, which is uh, is going to be an interesting one. And the reason why is because we have seen Remedy play in the past on Harbor. They just did it in the previous series. They played against Immortals. They took the 5-3 victory. They were doing a great job team-wise. Remember, teamwork, Blaze, was monumental in taking that victory over Immortals. It was one of the things that uh, they were able to capitalize yep. on. And, so, and that's for the power weapons. That's for retaking for the dominations. Uh, they just fought the right fights. And to be uh, specific about what exactly that they did during that map, which made them so successful, it was controlling top stern, okay? They even went to get behind in a weapon placement to place the sniper there because they felt mm. so comfortable in their base strategy when it came down to retaking several positions in which they may lose by running four players towards that side of the map. Now, Immortal's failure there was that they never adapted it. Uh, they tried to adapt, but uh, mm -hmm. that adaptation did not work out. Ultimately, they had to play man-on-man -man and win their fight and figure out a way how to add some variety in their initial between Winch and Stern. Um, but instead, they were rotating towards the home hills and um, Remedy just kind of picked them off. I don't think ALRM is going to make those same mistakes that Immortals did. Right. And they're going to get the fight um, that they did not get in their previous series on Harbor. And I'm excited to see it. I am too, because you got to think back when they were playing against Immortals, when they were getting that fight on top side on Winch, they weren't necessarily dominating it or winning it, if you remember correctly. When Immortals would meet them head on, it was a pretty big battle. And mm -hmm. most of the times, especially in those earlier rounds, Immortals was actually winning those initials. Remember how the Jesus first couple rounds went? Up. It was a domination. No, 100%. And that's the thing that worries me. If ALRM, -A -L -L -L, they're not going to do the whole you know, funky, just leave Stern by itself, go for the OE, you know, ignore Torque Bow and not even pick it up. They're not going to make mistakes like that. And if they meet this Remedy roster head on, their slain power is, is almost limitless. So mm -hmm. that is my worry for Remedy. It's going to be a tough battle through and through, and it really is going to come down to teamwork. Who's going to have the better of it? Yeah, I, you know what? I feel like um, most all initials that pro teams will run, they're going to prioritize power weapons over home heals, okay? Unless they got the other two heals already capped and they're playing for that mm -hmm. trip cap domination. But still, they'll, they'll take the power weapon to the trip cap domination if they need to. Uh, excited for, for this game to get underway because this is going to be a bloodbath, all right? It is. Um, it is. And I, when it comes down to power weapons that we may see on this map, I, I think a sniper is going to go down top stern. And if it does... Abolish is going to be looking like, you really put that down. Did uh, not build up your secondary. <laughs> You're going to let me have, let my teammates have a retro and a shot grenade to possibly get sniped free for two rounds for me to show you why I do what I do and why I didn't had so many clips on the Gears Esports Twitter over these years with that weapon. Okay. Well, hey, but that was that, then. Yeah, sorry, go. Uh, well, I'm just saying that was then. This is now, man. And Tanks has been lights out with the sniper. Bottom line, period, man. Is he better than Abolix? I can't say. Probably not. And the reason I why I say that is. I tell, well, you, I tell you what, we haven't seen enough of him yet, Blaze. That's, we haven't seen true. enough of Tanks. But, you know, Abolix but, has proven himself more in the past. At a different level. At the at top level. At a different, a different level, and that's, level where the baby, okay? that's where the Trump card <laughs> comes at, okay? It's been on a, it's been during the major, 
Okay, during the pro league, we've seen the plays in which he make to be on that stage. Now, mm -hmm. yeah, Tanks did it before, but you got to do it when you got pressure and you got three Lancers over your head and your team needs a big play. That's <laughs> when you make him. But it's a reason why a lot of the top professional teams will go tit for tat on weapon placements because they know how, how uh, detrimental it can be getting behind a placement at that level. So if Remedy is behind in score, they need not try something too crazy if it's not set up. Prioritize your secondaries closer to Stern before you start worrying about the placements down low if you really want that sniper. Woo, comes down to this, guys. Hey, chat, this is it. You support your team through and through because they only have one map to take and one team will not qualify for Pro League and the other one will, in fact, qualify. But you got to take this map here on Harbor. Nobody has that 1-0 lead anymore, right? It's all tied up. So it's going to be a fun one to watch. And Red Knight is on the hunt. He knew Lanarchy was going on that flank. Barely stays up. Full Red gets away to join the rest of his teammates. So that first initial, it's not over with just yet, but at least for that stern fight, Remedy was able to win it. And, that's, and that was a good fight for them. Now they got map control and they're feeling comfortable. Now we get to see how this teamwork is. The pressure's behind. Oh, no. Oh, morality goes for it, mainly no. on his teammate. Didn't realize he was on his third down. Or I think the down came through and he tried to, like we saw before, right? You melee, you give him health, but his teammate went down sure. at the same time and he killed him. That was the mm. blunder that happened. But he still got a kill. B Hill is still going in favor of ALRM, so he made up for it. I'm actually shocked ALRM was able to get B as well as they did. Now, granted, they're not out of the woods just yet. You have the Lancer fire coming in from Red Nine. You also have the players such as Aches as well as Days pressing in, but they're making quick work of them. Abolix able to finish off one. So is Rock able to finish off Aches. So good on them for doing so. And ALRM will continue to accumulate a lead. And things are going to slow down after this push on the A. Once Remedy, if they fall behind on this, ALRM is going to be able to accumulate probably a 50 or 60 point lead before Remedy is able to do anything else. Tanks, he's going to slowly make his way out of here. He almost got chunked over the top. Lanark, he finally hits the shot. Red Knight was occupied by a bollock. So man advantage on the side of ALRM. They're trying to focus on getting his B Hill as they know nobody's on Witch. So this is the perfect opportunity to push out these players. But Daze, he has the presence of mind and the leadership to let Ace know to back up. Don't get caught out because we don't have a guy in Witch no more. And ALRM, they're waiting to pinch us. So... They disengage, they wait for reinforcements, and they have a quick rotation towards top stern, looking to get this advantage once again, possibly play for the home hills, and play, most importantly, for the angles on B to get this uh, get this hill decap. It's going to be hard, but I guess that job made a little bit easier as morality does fall. And that leaves up player nine Rocky to hold his own. But again, Days has to win this fight. The Lancer fire is helpful, but if Days doesn't take down Rocky, he's not going to be successful in holding down B. Does get captured, but again, they're not out of the woods to shit. ALRM, because that lead they were able to accumulate means all they have to do is hold on to their home hill. But you do have players two and five, Red Nine and Aches, who are looking to press in, but it's going to be a tough fight. You got to go through a Bollocks and Lanarchy, but Red Nine ignores the both of them, gets through. <gasps> Never mind. Does he make up for it? He does no. it. The chunk is there. Home Hill stays intact, but also in that moment, multiple players died on the low side of the hmm. map. It didn't matter. It was a great effort for them, but. Um, in the end, the round still would have went in favor of ALRM. Like you said, it wouldn't have mattered. So, I mean, but still, that that cannot happen because what if that fight was one on Bravo, right? What what if mm -hmm. it was one on Bravo? You, you, you have to capitalize. And you're taking out your own teammate, obviously never a good thing. Maybe nerves, maybe not. But you got to calm it down, right? Got to yep. calm it down. You've been here. You've done that. You've been playing well today. Don't let it fall behind at this point in time. This is the worst time to start letting those nerves get to you. But you're only down 1-0. Still a lot more map to be played, Blaze, and still a lot to be had. Now, that's the Botox down low at B is a standard placement now for Harbor. And uh, I do believe that's the right opening placement. You want to give your guys who's playing the home hills a little bit of that headshot potential to help you in this fight specifically. Tanks knows he needs to be careful. And, and you see the headshot comes through on multiple angles. Oh. Double kill, making a triple kill for ALRM. And what is the player zero morality? I don't know who got the headshot, but I think the Botox got it from afar. 
and now Days is upset. He knows he needs to make something happen because the pressure is coming. Try to defend a B Hill. Well placed flash. Oh he no. He's in a fight for now. What? Did he buy his teammates enough time on the other end? I think he did. Well, it really. It, it depends, though. I mean, at this point in time, ALRM still has that pressure forward, and they're on all angles. You have player three tanks who's going to be in a 1v1. You got the two players in front of Red Nine. Red Nine will fall, and into the blender remedy goes. Red Nine's trying to break out. You have three members down low. Tank's going to finish off one. That's going to be three members down. A Bollix is also gone. That's four. Remedy needs to be off to the races. They just got to get on B. They've got to get presence on C and not allow ALR, ALRM to breathe. Man, great job to, to Remedy for holding their ground because they had flanks coming from B. They were pressured up, but they fought their way through it. And I love how they didn't waste any time getting towards the opponent's side of the map, but this is a tricky battle here when it comes down to tug of war and momentum of rotations because if you know you're not going to get the trip cap domination, you always have to threaten it, but you need to know when to back up. So you don't give another man advantage to your opponent because in 4v4 Gears of War again, you got to play your life Oof. in days being sneaky behind enemy lines. He's going to pull back all the members of ALRM towards their spine to be forced to fight him. But he almost found a creative route to get away in the end. He's going to die. But he did so much with that life. Red Nine needs to hold his own here. Two players in front. It's going to be hard. He's also getting landed out from player seven. So it's almost an impossible situation to get out of unless a Bollix could be dealt with. And that's going to be up to player three tanks to distract. Red Nine knows the only way forward is, okay. or the only way to win this is to go forward. And Rocky also falls too. So believe it or not, an impossible situation made possible due to Red Nine clutching up and going as big as he did. Remedy is now taking over the lead for the first time in round number two and they're looking to make good on this domination. And I don't want to uh, undervalue how clutch Red Knight went, went there. Player 7, which was a Bollocks, was not even contested on Winch when the fight was won. A Bollocks teammates, though, man, after the flash hit and the pressure that came from down low, they were not in a position, and they didn't even, I don't know if they even felt comfortable of trying to, you know, he take Red Nine out right there, but in the end, he hit some big shots and he got the main advantage in which his team needed for them to be able to push and get that trip cap domination there. Here we go, tied up one to one, looking to be competitive. I was a little bit worried, Blaze, that uh, at, a, at a certain point in that last round, I thought it was going to be a quick 2 0, right? And I was like, oh man, Remedy is, is really starting to fall behind, mm -hmm. but they're back into it. But I like how competitive this is. You're seeing a lot of great moments from Remedy, a lot of great moments from ALRM. Mm -hmm. It still is anybody's game. Those Botox, those Botox, by the way, were probably the deadliest I've ever seen them in that last round. I saw so many headshots with them. So many times players were put down. I can't wait to see if it occurs, occurs in this round number three. But for Red Nine, he's looking, he's hungry. He wants to push a ball to Lanarchy, and he's going for it. That's going to be one down. He's going in for the second onto Lanarchy. Can't make it happen, but he is going to be picked up. Lanarchy is forced to run away at this point in time. Be he is also being played around with a player four. That's going to be Days fighting off morality, mm. and he's going to win it. B is going to be locked in place for the boys Awareness of Remedy. Awareness too. Awareness too, because he goes for the kill. Lanarchy chunks him there. He stays in cover, and he's going to force this player to take his own life. But if he lets the revive come through, all right. The very last moment, he's even able to get two, acquire two kills for his team there. And um, big shout out to Ace here for Remedy. 10 assists here, if not more in these current um, two rounds of the map, doing everything he can for his team. But now morality, he goes down. The pinch is there. Daze has a lancer in the back. Oh, but even with the shots he's putting in. Ace! Oh, he does it! He no does way! It. H turns up. He says, I'm not all about assists. How about you assist me so I can get some of these kills? <laughs> Yo, Aix just popped off, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a Remedy fan, you love to see that. My goodness. I was a little bit worried about the nerves earlier, but that right there puts him right back in the saddle. Good job from Aix to pop off as well as he did to take that lead two to one as we go into the final round of the first half. But I am loving this battle of attrition between these two rosters. It has been neck and neck. But who is going to finally take the lead? Or at least a two-round lead, right? Because they've been going back and forth, trading rounds left and right. Who is finally going to take the two-round lead, if, if anyone at all? All right, here we go. Looking at this opening initial. Mirror strategies, Botox acquired. We got Retro Lancers built up. 3v3 fight. 
It's going to be Winch focused here, all right? A flank does come through for the side of ALRM. So that means that Tanks needs to win the fight on the forefront. And he saves Red 9. And with that being said, Rocky, he continues to push through. But Remedy does not want to lose the advantage in which their teammates work so hard for. So they take him out and say, hey, man, you take your own life. We got to go get your own hill. Retro up close. That's going to be so devastating to get that chip damage in, especially if the rest of his teammates can get up there. Player four is going to be on the flank, but I think he's more concerned with player zero morality who's coming in. Those two players from ALRM are going to fall a bit short. Now they're getting desperate. They're just going for touches, trying to stay alive. Not going to have the opportunity to do so. Rocky's going to be there. Instead of Blender, he goes. He's gone. That's going to be another round for Remedy, taking it three to one into the second half. And now at this point in time, do we see that long shot? Do we see a torque bow up top? You mentioned Ramity might be the ones to place it, but at this point in time, being not. down three to one, do the boys of ALRM decide to do it as well and fall behind an eco? Ramity bet not put that down. They better keep building up their <laughs> secondary so they can't build them up, build them up no more while they got the lead. These last two rounds have been phenomenal for them. And honestly, Taylor, if I feel like they just wanted a little bit more. That's what I, based off of the, the quickness in which they were playing that, how they had each other's back, the crossfire, the aggressiveness. They wanted more than ALRM until I'm proven wrong. Yep. Whew. Okay, Red9 once again, this position he's been in before. Uh, this time, though, ALRM is going to wisely back off, but it's going to put them on E, so they're going to be able to get that. Very confused why Red9 just slowly and casually just turns into that shock being full red, but hey, it is what it is. Bollix now is going to take over this Lancer angle, and that's going to be beneficial in Lancering out player number four of days. So now it's back to the drawing board, right, for Remedy. Got to find a way to push these boys back. Yes, they do. Now, ALRM, since they have, since we're going to be in our first round of the second half, they're going to be uh, a lot more diligent when it comes down to locking down the stern and winch control because the E hill is there now. So they're going to be locked in. And we're going to see a lot of retro lancer use for them. That Botox is going to get rotated as well. Also, with those weapons on the map, if a, if a power weapon goes up top as well, ALRM could be making a comeback, but. Let's not get ahead of ourselves because Ace, he found an opening. His teammate, his duo in tanks is going to find a kill also on the other end of the map. 4v2 advantage for them. They got another down in the center oh. lane. They picked up the remaining player closer to spine. They know Rocky is the closest one to do anything. Just get a flash out, cut off his route. The crossfire is there and they're at pro league point. That's what I'm calling it. Pro league point. I, I think that sets the that sets the tone 100 percent that sets the severity of this next round without question blaze they needed to get tanks out of that spot man tanks should never have got as far sniper pushed time. up as he did is it sniper time you mentioned a bollocks being a being a head turner if you will with that sniper rifle he's done it in the past but again you still have to secure the sniper rifle and even if a bollocks Ooh. gets it we've seen it in the past with exploits he's not been Ooh. able to get it but we don't get it we get the retro lancers instead but at this point in time remedy so close to victory Good to but they still got to win one more round I, you know, personally, either sniper or torque bow, you have to at least control the two to one hill setup. So you that means you need to win an initial, at least give yourself a power weapon, right? If they want to match the retro lancer. I'm not mad at it. We know how powerful it is. The Botox good in the right hands as well. But regardless, ALRM, this is a must win round for him. Off his right hand advantage and with low pressure, a bollocks comes out. He gets first blood. Him and his teammates going to clear out this area, but player five got behind enemy lines. That's eights once again. He's going to have to force ALRM to back up off his teammates. If he gets away here and plays his life, he goes down mid-map, but the revive Thanks. comes through. His he duo. does enough to get his teammates back in an advantageous position and take some momentum away from ALRM. And Red9 holding his own up top, at least at most. He allows for his teammates to get back into the fight. That's an easy 3v1. Abolic can't do anything there despite his heroics in the past. And now player four is dangerously close to challenging morality for the home hill. And with player after player from ALRM falling to the wayside, this might be the final push. If done right, Remedy could secure their spot in the pro league right here, right now. He definitely could. The kills are there. The Lancers, the Retros, the Flashes, and give them all. He tried to give them a victory, a victory stab, but that's five in a row. Red 9, Tech, 
Cakes. Hey. Welcome to the Pro League Days. Good to see Ooh. you again, brother. I see you hey, always man. on top. Call 1-800-DAYS, all right? <laughs> they get you to the Pro League if you're trying to make it. Hey, they were dialing that number as fast as they could, too, in these matches, man. I got to say, I am impressed from Remedy. Again, the storyline going into this last chance qualifier was this. During the Pro League qualifiers, Remedy was always at the top echelon of the points. Come week number three, when they had a chance to qualify then, they ended up falling short and they ended up not making it into the Pro League. Naturally, they transitioned to the last chance qualifiers. They fall short once again. But then again, they had to go and get to Old Man round number one. So I take nothing away from that, man. If you're going to lose to anybody, you're going to lose to Old Man because they're just such a good roster. But at this point in time, Blaze, Remedy, they wanted it more. Again, we talked about a Red Nine, Tanks, Aches. It's so weird to see Aches in the Gears Pro League, but it is what it is at this point. But they're here, baby, and they wanted it more. And you said whoever wants it more is going to get the victory. Well, here's Remedy. Hey, man, welcome to the league. I dropped, I dropped my phone. I was looking. I was like, damn, here's <laughs> esports with this. Here's esports with the spoiler alerts already. Come on, <laughs> let it play out. Let the fans watch it. <laughs> but Crazy, regardless man. of, uh, man, it was a hard fought battle, man. They they came back. They they hit a great map number one. And they finish it off here at map number three. And I'm excited to watch how these players grow, Taylor, uh, because we know that when you when players make it to the pro league, that's where they are able to take their games to the next level, get an opportunities to play against teams, um, you know, like AMC, Rise, Hive, Noble, PK, Fire and Ice, VQ, your defending champions. These guys are going to be some of the some some of the best Gears of War players that we're going to be talking about um, over this next year because, hey, that's that's where you go. And I think these dudes can take their gameplay to the next level now. There's a guy in chat. Uh, his name is Citrix. Um, he was absolutely supporting Remedy all the way back when they were playing against uh, Immortals. You know, he said, you know, reflections. Remedy, you think they're going to win it all? And I said, I think so. I said that in chat just to kind of appease him. I really didn't think so because, again, I was going with ALRM uh, during that Pro League qualifier match. But I will say this. He's ahead of the curve. He believed in his boys. And Citrix, congratulations to you for obviously uh, Remedy pushing forward. Big moves all around. Again, I'm happy for them. Uh, I, you know, I've watched Remedy, Red Nine Tanks. Well, most specifically Red Nine. I've watched him quite a bit in the Challenger series. So it's good to know that now he's finally in the Pro League because he's been competing for so incredibly long. But hey, it is what it is. I like what I've seen tonight, and it was great. I want to do a recap of what took place today, though, because there were some heroics made throughout that loser bracket. Again, Remedy was there early on. They lost to Old Men 2-1. to one. It was a close series, but they had a lot of work still to do earlier in the day. First matchup, Double R. That's another team I expected to make it through. And if they would have made it through, I wouldn't have even been surprised. They then had to go through and take down Immortals, which they were able to do. And again, Immortals, a very talented roster, but Remedy looked even more talented. That Harbor matchup, 5-3, Remedy was able to take it. Asylum, Remedy takes it 5-1 to one and showed that they are a phenomenal Asylum team. Of course, though, we know how loser qualifying round ended up going. Remedy, game number three, they take Harbor, five to one end up ahead and they look solid matter of fact in this entire series between remedy and AL alrm it ended up being 15 to five in overall round count so without question remedy was the better team today in the loser bracket and they absolutely earned their spot alongside old men to be in the pro league they absolutely did indeed taylor uh you know and they were the only team to take a map own old man to kick us off and push him a distance. That's so they right. got a great warm up to kick the day off in the winter side. And they took that momentum throughout the losers, having to win three straight um, to make it to this point. Congrats to them. Um, I can see that the chat super excited to have these guys in the league. I'm going to be super excited to cast them and just kind of watch their growth. You know, can't be worse than the people's champ, right? Stop it. Stop it. Why you got hey, Oh, I'm sorry. Blaze, why why you got do we're in a whole different split. Now you gotta still roast TPC. I'm not gonna I, say it's look, I, I will I say I don't it, like people bashing the league and just making the league look bad. Oh, you let know, me I'm, say I'm this. gears the war to hey. my core, man. Okay, that's all. That's all, all I'm, I'm saying done, is I'm I don't done. disagree with it, brother. You're not wrong with what you said. Okay, I fully support what you just said. I'm just saying we didn't have to say it, all right, because we knew exactly I said it. I'd people's the hey, I they didn't it. win a single match. Bottom line, period. 
tragic. But hey, with that being said, though, it is a sad day for ALRM. They made it so close. And for them to be out of the pro league, it's got to hurt them, right? I mean, we're talking about some really great players. Rocky, Morality, Abolix, Lanarchy. These players at one point were the top echelon in the teams, and now they're going to have to compete in the Challenger Series if they don't get picked up later on or something happens where this roster is added. Well, it, it, it is a heartbreaking defeat. Abolix is the hottest free agent out the pro league at this point. 100%. Right? 100%. 100%. Anyone who can get a, who can find a way to get a Bollocks on a team, if it's just like, hey, man, this ain't working out, all the Bollocks, all right? Uh, it's going to be <laughs> suck. It's going to suck not to cast him and, and see some of the fantastic plays in which you're making to kick it off. But regardless of, man, we're stacked, man. We're looking good to kick off this next split. Yeah, February 23rd, Gears Pro League will return. I can't wait to get it started. Like you said, we have a ton of NA teams. Latam is not falling behind per se. They still got those powerhouse teams. Rebels being one of them, man. The storylines, Rebel, PK. I, I can't, man, honestly, we're going to have to create a, an entire episode just to discuss all the storylines because it's just getting wild out there. But it's been a phenomenal day, Blaze. I'll leave it to you for your final words. Hey, man, we definitely are going to have to talk about all the storylines, get everybody up to date. But it's been a pleasure having me here once again um, to cast some Gears of War. Can't wait to come back during the Pro League. And, um, hey, we're set up. So, fans, get ready. Like you said, February 22nd, 23rd is the first two days of the Pro League. Can't wait to see what these guys are going to bring um, to the competition, Every all 12 teams as a whole. And I can't wait to watch the show in which they put on for us all. Well, it's been wonderful having all of you out there in chat. Make sure you hit that follow button if you haven't already. We keep the gears action going for you. And uh, again, man, it's always a pleasure. You guys coming out Valentine's Day and supporting your favorite team. Mm -hmm. Say big heart, big love to all of you out there. For myself, Taylor Reflections, Noble Guy, Blaze, Ryan Ryan, Full Summers, and our production team and you in chat. We loved having you. And we hope to see you again on our next Gears broadcast.